All right, today I'm going to cover section 3.2, part 2, uh, specifically looking at regional climates and changes in global climate patterns. So in our previous lecture, we talked about the difference between weather and climate, how weather is short-term and climate is long-term, and uh, talked about, you know, how do you determine the climate in an area. It's just like uh, basically a bunch of averages taken over a long period of time. It's kind of like the average weather. And then we talked about the causes of the ocean currents where we have this uneven heating uh, distribution of, of solar radiation going on on planet Earth, where most of it's concentrated um, at the equator, then the poles, and we get convection currents. That So these convection currents, along with Coriolis effect, cause ocean currents as well as wind currents. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the regional climates and some processes involved in climatic changes. So let me just skip to where we left off, right here, regional climate. So regional climate is shaped by a lot of different factors depending on the location. Um, it could be shaped by latitude. Okay, so it's at mid-latitude, is it near the equator, is it somewhere in between? Uh, it's also shaped by the transport of heat and moisture. And so, um, like if you are near a warm ocean current, well then, you know, you're going to get some warm moist air, so you might get some higher precipitation levels. So I think I mentioned yesterday about Great Britain, how Great Britain sits higher than us in latitude, and yet their winters are way more milder than ours um, because they have that warm Gulf Stream current bringing in that warm moisture. So their winters kind of tend to be a little rainy. Um, winds and ocean currents, so yeah, they're kind of responsible for that, as well as geographical features, um, especially around mountain ranges. So if we have a, a giant you know, mountain range, several mountains you know, in a chain here, and we have an ocean on one side, and we get the prevailing winds, bring in that warm, moist air, and it forces it up the mountain. And when you climb in elevation, the air gets colder. So your, the air rises, it cools and condenses, forming precipitation. So one side of a mountain tends to be a lot greener than the other side of the mountain. Because once it reaches the top, then the air will warm because it's lost all of its moisture from dropping it in precipitation, and it's drier, and um, you just get less moisture. And you actually kind of see this in the state of Washington. My husband and I drove out to the state of Washington a couple summers ago with the with the Dodge Charger. That was pretty fun. And um, I couldn't believe I, I actually saw like desert, like desert parts in Washington state. We stopped at some state parks and they had signs like, you know, beware of rattlesnakes. And I was like, okay, like um, Larissa, you're not going to be walking around here. I'm going to put you on my shoulders. Um, but it was very step-like, like it was just very, like I said, I felt like I was in a desert. And then when we got closer to the coast, then things turned, you know, greener. Okay. So this is what the, these pictures are, are talking about. So it, it's usually called the rain shadow effect, where one side of the mountain is dry and the other side is wet. Okay. Um, it does, like clim climate conditions do vary dramatically. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Duluth, because Duluth sits on Lake Superior. And um, it's been documented that some parts of Duluth, I mean, they get way more snowfall, like several inches higher than um, areas just like outside of Duluth because of um, the lake effect. Okay, so we can kind of classify these as microclimates. Your book doesn't mention about microclimates, but just the climate of a very small specific place within a larger area. Uh, we see this in large cities with urban heat islands where, you know, it's basically a concrete jungle. You have little vegetation evaporation and the cities tend to remain warmer because of all that asphalt that absorbs all that heat and hangs onto it later on at night. And so this is a picture of just some of the, um, uh, of a city at night, okay, infrared here, uh, showing heat being radiated off um, due to concrete, okay. I put up here apartment. <laughs> when I lived in a studio apartment when I first started my job here, um, my heater was so like a, like I said, a studio apartment, basically a one room apartment where you walk in, boom, there's the kitchen and the dining room table. And then my bed was in a corner. It was lofted and underneath was my desk to do work. And I had a bank vault as my closet. And then there was uh, another little room for the bathroom. And my heater was um, elevated. It was near the ceiling. So during the winter, you know, I turn on my heater, but what does warm air do? It rises. And it, you know, it took forever to, to heat my apartment because I'd be sitting underneath my bed because my bed was lofted 
working on lesson plans and I'm just freezing and then I climb up into my bed and then I'm just dying of heat. Um, so I actually had to put in a couple of fans to help circulate the air, but it's just, you know, I could consider that a microclimate. So, okay. Changes in climate. Um, so if, you know, if there is a change of climate, regional climates, you know, result, but if the changes happen too fast, extinction can occur for some species because they're not able to adapt fast enough. And we're actually kind of seeing this, um, with some species right now. And I think, you know, maybe I'd like to throw the polar bears into this category where, you know, their, their ice is, it is disappearing. Okay. We are slightly warming up here. Um, and if they can't find ways to adapt, you know, then they, they just might go extinct. But I do want to stress, you know, going over this little, um, circle this diagram here uh, there's causes of global changes that could be human caused okay but not all factors are human caused okay so we have solar output and I don't know if you guys know this but our sun is actually 30 percent brighter today than it was at the start of the solar system earth's tilt in orbit does change our tilt does change you know like right now we're 23 and a half and the north star sits basically right over the north pole but in a few thousand years, um, the Polaris star, which is, you know, the Little Dipper, will no longer be our North Star. It will be, I think, Vega. Okay. Um, meteorite impacts. Let's hope that doesn't happen. We have plate tectonics and movement. You know, our continents are moving. Mountain formation as well as volcanism. Okay. So not everything's human caused, but yeah. Okay. I actually would like to leave this lecture with just a little bit of humor because of, due to, to COVID. Um, so I don't know if you guys have like have been on social media, but the coronavirus memes can be pretty good. And um, this one is, is especially, it says nature is healing. So like I've heard stories where um, Venice, the water, the canals of Venice are clear. Now, whether or not that's true, I mean, I mean I've heard it's true, but you know, you have to be careful with the source. So like this post right here, this is not actually in Venice. It's in a nearby Italian town. Um, but people are just, you know, just trying to share some bright spots here. So some people took it extreme um, right here. This is actually from Minneapolis. With everyone on lockdown, the Lime scooters are finally returning to the river. Nature's healing. We are the virus. So then this has gone viral. And so other people have put in their own um, memes. Wow, this is New York City today where the city streets are empty and nature has returned for the first time since 65 million years. Oh God, oh, you know. So the earth is healing. We are the virus. Wildlife finally returning to Thames. Nature is healing. Um, the Loch Ness Monster in, in Scotland. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny. Uh, Furbies. By the way, because Furby's eyes are straight, like, they're on the front of the organism. They are considered predatory creatures, just so you know. But anyways, that does it for today's lecture. So, um, you know, we talked about regional climates, uh, how it's shaped by geographical features and ocean currents and a few other factors, and then um, some of the processes involved in climate change. So take care.